So I've been talking to some of the people on social media and online, trying to find out exactly what kind of questions they'd like to ask yeah, yeah. you and the Lib Dems. And I picked out three of the top ones that I feel really are going to hopefully pose you a little bit of a challenge okay. today. So the first one is from Sandy, who asks, what plans do the Lib Dems have if you were asked to form a left-wing coalition government at the next election? Uh, well, it's down to the people, the honest truth of that. Um, Democracy means whoever gets the most votes forms a government, and if there's a, a party that, or if no party gets a majority, then there's either a minority government uh, or coalition. The way I would answer that is slightly different, in the sense that what I'm proud of what the coalition achieved, and, I, and to the day I die, I'm not going to budge on that. We made mistakes, but by God, look at the chaos now. I believe the coalition the Liberals, 70% of our manifesto is delivered, and I'm really proud of that. Um, however, a consequence of the coalition with the Conservatives is we were nearly wiped out. Now, as a Liberal, I'm much more interested in outcomes, Anne. What I'm interested in is, is say I'm trying to get to there, you can come from the, the, the left, the centre or the right. I'm not interested about the right or the centre or the left. What I'm interested in is getting an objective, and that's always been my view. It's one of the reasons I'm a Liberal. The sad consequence after the fact that the public took a decision to virtually wipe us out, uh, having been in coalition with the Tories, is hell will freeze over before I ever go in coalition with the Tories ever again. But I'm not pleased with that because I'm a Liberal and Liberals aren't about fixed ideological, only I'm right and everyone else is wrong. That's demented. It's one of the things that annoys me about tribal politics, but I'm not stupid. It didn't the public wouldn't hack it. So uh, I may well, or Liberals may well be in government with Labour or what have you after the next election, depending on the numbers. But even if the numbers were in theory that we could be in coalition with the Tories, I won't do it because it will kill our party. And I think that's a shame. I think that's a real shame. <laughs> but there you go. Okay, great. Well, we've got another question, yeah, and this comes from Adam, and he's asking, considering the outcome of the last general election and the fallout from the Lib Dem coalition uh, with the Conservatives, uh, would you agree that plans such as calling for a second referendum on Brexit, for instance, may have harmed your chances? Uh, not really, because uh, uh, I've never called for that. My party has. But I'm, and I'm a Remainer. I think it's wrong. I think it's economically daft to leave the EU. I really do believe that. When 48% of your trade is with, with one trading bloc, I think it's crazy to leave. But I made a promise during the referendum uh, where I advocated a Remain and I debated and I argued and I went to events. I made a promise, however, to Eastbourne that I would accept the results of the referendum. Uh, and also I made a promise that I wouldn't be calling for a second referendum. Um, and I never, ever break my word for Eastbourne. I voted against my party when they hiked the tuition fees. I respect it. Because to me, when I promise something to Eastbourne, it's not just a red line, it's a blooming 20-foot brick wall. I just don't break it. So uh, I, I'm, at, I'm not at one with my party on that. I'm not calling for a second referendum because I respect the result, because that's what I promised. Um, and equally, I will be supporting the Brexit vote when it finally comes through, because that's what I promise. It's easy to keep a promise when it's easy. The hard part, Ant, is to keep a promise when it's hard. But when I give my word to Eastbourne, I never break it. OK, no problem. Well, we've got one more question for you, and this comes from Katie. And this is because uh, you are, of course, a Lib Dem welfare spokesperson. So she asks, when are the government going to acknowledge universal credit is hurting thousands of people? And will it ever revert back to the old system? I think that's a really good question, Katie. And in Eastbourne, since the, re the general election 2017, it's just been over a year. My case work file is through the roof. I mean, my team see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. It, it's really tough out there for people who are disadvantaged, more so than it was before. Uh, and one of my passions about being East Border Willingdon's Member of Parliament is I'm there to serve the people. So I've got a casework machine. You know, uh, MPs have a staff budget of X, and some MPs employ their wife or husband on 70 grand and a couple of youngsters. I've got nine full and part-time staff, do the math. They don't get paid well, you know, but they do it because, like me, they're passionate about 
serving the town and casework and issues around universal credit, it is really, really tough out there. Now, the government, I've been lobbying against uh, the government on some elements of universal credit since I, I was re-elected. There's been a tiny bit of wiggle room around default payment, uh, direct default payments to private sector landlords. Not as much as I'd like, but a little bit. And whole other areas, I think the, the government are dig putting their head in the sand. They really are. I mean, I challenged the Secretary of State only last week um, uh, about, frankly, the untruth that she told when she came to Parliament the week before. And she was caught out on that. She really was. I've called for her resignation. I just don't think she's doing a good job. But far more importantly, uh, I think Universal Credit, though it has some pluses, it's got too many minuses at the minute, and until those minuses are sorted, I think it should be paused. There's a lot of pressure on the government on that. Uh, only about 10% of people have had universal credit roll out. It started in Eastbourne in October. We're managing it reasonably well in October because I'm work, my office is working very closely with the CAB, uh, with the DWP, with the council, with housing. So we're managing quite well. And I would urge any uh, constituents who live in Eastbourne and Willingdon, if you have problems, come to my office, 100 Seaside Road, uh, opposite Cosmo Chinese Restaurant. We're open 10 to 4 Monday to Friday, and I have a whole team working on this. Will it stop? I don't know. There's actually an opposition day tomorrow where Labour have uh, uh, secured an opposition day specifically uh, putting more pressure again on the Secretary of State, Esther McVeigh, the DWP, around universal credit. Um, uh, I'm hoping to be there to uh, debate and argue and, and speak on it, albeit only an hour ago I've discovered there's been a double booking, so I may struggle. But anyway, I and others are keeping the pressure up. Um, the one thing I would say is it's not rolling out as fast as they wanted because of the pressure. And so I'm hoping that every week that we keep that pressure up in the government, uh, there's more of a chance that they will halt it and fix everything before they move forward. Great. Well, thank you very much for answering those questions. Hopefully they answered some of those questions for so. the Eastbourne. Thank you very thank much. You, Appreciate it.